Edwin Frondozo on the Business Leadership Podcast every week for a unique program featuring insights and actionable items from the world's most successful business leaders. Hear firsthand the exclusive interviews and personal journeys on how today's transformational leaders made it to the top. Hey everybody, it's me, it's Edwin, and thank you for taking your time to join me on the Business Leadership Podcast today. This is episode number 41, and I'm happy to share the conversation that I had with Matthew Hollingshed. He is the CEO and founder at HiFire, a growing custom software developer based out of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. With the time I had with Matthew, we talked about what he learned by growing a rapidly scaling company, the reasons that he believes being vulnerable is the, key, is the key to growth as not only a person, but as a, as a business leader, where he finds mentors and why he prefers podcasts over books now. Before getting started, quick shout out to my media partners, IT World Canada and Startup Canada for the amazing support of the podcast. Now enjoy the show. Welcome to the Business Leadership Podcast, Matthew. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you. Look, I was looking forward to to our conversation. But Matthew, let's just get started off by you. Who, who who is Matthew? If you could tell the listeners who you are personally, I mean, outside of business when you're growing and leading them. Yeah, so I am a father of two great kids, uh, 13 and 16-year-old Lucas and Maya. Um, I'm an avid hockey player. As a hockey goalie, I get to play as many nights as I want, nice. which is awesome. Uh, on the weekends, during the winter, I like to get out snowboarding, so I'm anxiously awaiting the snow to come and so we can get on the hill and, and have some fun. Um, lately, I've been out getting outside as much as I can, getting into nature, getting out on a hike, looking for you know some adventure, something exciting, something new to find out there. Uh, it, it's really, you know, my goal right now in life is to figure out how to have the best time possible and, and just take everything in and enjoy it. So why don't we just jump in? If you could tell us a little bit about your current company, High Fire, let us know what your current role is and maybe Matthew, if you could share what you're trying to accomplish over the next 12 months. Yeah. So, so High Fire is a custom software development studio based in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, we work with startups and fortune 500 companies uh, throughout canada the u.s and internationally um, we like to work with companies that are growing quickly or looking to drive growth through digital um, we we tend to have nice long engagements with, with our clients so sometimes you know five to seven years long uh, so it really gives us a chance to dig, dig into their their day-to-day -day business learn what they're doing and really help them drive that growth um, our services we provide are digital strategy, product design, and development. Uh, my current role is we are a growing team, so so I've been sort of as the original owner and founder, and you know at one point solopreneur in this in in this uh, in this business. Uh, my my role has completely changed, where I'm now focused on driving growth. I have a great team working underneath me. Uh, we're a 50 50 split male female dev team, which is awesome. That's amazing. So we have a really nice family going. And one of the most important things I think I did was my first hire that I brought on was a guy named Alex Verderman, who's worked with me for a very long time. Um, I think he's actually officially five years with us as of today with the company. Congrats. Um, <laughs> he, he, yeah. He, he, bringing someone on who can begin to run the day to day, which, which gets me out now. A little bit outside of the day-to-day -day business, and now I can focus on on growth strategy, building partnerships, uh, really looking to direct the company where we'd like it to go. Um, let me see what else can I tell you. I can give you a really great example of a, of a piece of work we just recently did that we're super proud of. That'll sort of tell you how we like to work with clients. Yeah, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, we, we recently worked with uh, Metrum, who's one of the first medical marijuana licensed producers in Canada. And we started working with them the day they had the idea to build it. And, and with them over the next four years, up to recently this January, we created some of the first online software platform for the medical marijuana uh, industry in Canada. We helped them grow quickly, 
uh, to 22,000 patients, it's the second largest in Canada. Um, and then in January, they were bought by the largest Canopy Growth for $432 million. So we really got to help them grow from four guys with an idea to 160 staff and right straight through to the acquisition. And uh, they, we were their only digital uh, team on the on the piece. Oh, that's crazy! So you guys um, were responsible for not only the platform but the digital the digital space as well. Yeah. So yeah, we we took care of everything on the digital side. So we also helped them decide on their you know business strategies, help them define some of the requirements from a Health Canada standpoint, which at that point were extremely gray. So we really like to get in with them, work completely on you know get a, an idea of what their business is about and how we can best drive their goals through digital. Very cool. That's very cool. And and that's a interesting space for the listeners out there who may not be aware in Canada. That's just that the space is growing and the government is just opening it up wide now. Absolutely booming. And it's it was pretty pretty exciting for our team to get involved in that and and get that experience early on. Uh so it's really helped us not only in that industry, but also see how we can carry through these long term projects and really, you know, drive change and drive have an effect on them as a whole. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. So, I mean, that, that, that's great. And thank you for sharing that, uh, with me for, uh, with us today. But, uh, I really wanted to just go back. Uh, I mean, with the podcast, I get, uh, you know, a very nice opportunity to listen to business leaders, folks like yourself and where they come from. And, and when I was looking at your history, um, it looked like you were, you, you started with a company as employee number one. I think the company is called Groove Media. Their video yeah. game publisher, and that grew to a headcount of uh, I think 160, raised over 32 million dollars. So, with that in mind, Matthew, can you share with us some of the key turning points, or or even some decisions that you had to make, which in turn allowed you to grow as a business leader? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was a, a pretty pivotal moment for me, and you know, uh, right at when I started with Groove, I was uh, yeah, a new father. Oh, wow. I was still very young in my career. I had actually started my own agency and decided to leave um, for several different reasons. But mostly when you're a new father, things change <laughs> very right. quickly. Um, so really, uh, you know what? Coming into Groove Media, there was uh, four um, or three amazing founders mm -hmm. that I, I kind of wholeheartedly trust, uh, you know, in, in, with where their direction was going. It was a bit of a risk. It was in, it was a video game publishing business. Uh, I knew a bit about video games at the time. Um, but really it was a leap of faith for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I learned a lot from those three guys as far as, you know, how to work with resilience, hustle, and how to define a strategy and really, and really go after it. Um, you know, it, it's one of the most important probably lessons I've taken away from that one is, is to find your strategy and go. Um, you know, I'm lucky still to call all those guys I worked with, uh, at Groove friends and, and we helped really build that business up. And it was initially just a, a, a PC and, and a console publishing company. So we, we made video games and sold them in, in Walmart, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we grew the initial team to about 30 people, I think it was. And we were doing 20 to 30 million in revenue and, and we, we were going like gangbusters and all of a sudden, our distributor went bankrupt. Oh, wow. And we lost a whole bunch of inventory out on shelves. We couldn't collect any money on. We, um, y you know, lost some cash. So it really kind of crippled the business a bit. And, and it was, you know, the guys who owned it came together and ended up uh, raising this $32 million to create a new iteration of the business that was, based on online skill gaming. So we were having, you know, people be able to place wagers on, on, on actual video games. And so they quickly raised that money and the team, you know, had to explode really fast to 160 people, which I think is one of the other lessons I definitely took away from it is growth can happen really quickly, but if you don't have the right pieces in place from a, a strategy from uh, your systems uh, from an HR standpoint, things can get crazy fast. And, and once they start going crazy, it's really hard to wrangle back in. Yes. Um, no, you know. for sure. So, t so tell me some of the systems that you, you probably had in place or didn't have in place at that time. 
Well, I think uh, I think when you go from 30 to 160, it's a completely different set of systems and you almost have to make it up. And I don't think, uh, you know, many of us had ever been in that experience. I mean, really, it was my first time building a, a real solid team underneath me. So even I, I was pretty young and I I found that it was really uh, a new experience for me to manage and build a department. So doing the HR, mm -hmm. you know doing all the hiring, the interviewing, uh, distribu distribution of work, how we track the work, all of that stuff was not in place. And and really a funny other part of that is I was sitting down with a friend of mine who I've known since I was a child and worked with me at Groove at the time. And just three months ago, he told me that people who worked for me there hated working for me, Oh, <laughs> which really? is always a hard thing to hear, but <laughs> you know, you, you gotta be willing to hear these things. Yes. And, and really what it was is that, um, you know, I'd worked for so long on my own, driving all the creative for Groove that you have, you you kind of get in your way of doing things Sure. and you want people to continue to do it your way of doing things. Cause you don't know any better. You don't know that listening to somebody when they give you, you know, you know, some, some thoughts or feedback that it, that it may even be better than the way you want to do it. So really it was about, about learning how to go from a, a solopreneur idea to, you know, managing a team, uh, and being a, a leader who can, who can, you know, uh, be humble enough to hear what other people who work for you, you hire good people for a reason. That's right. Because you expect them to be good. And and that was probably my biggest lesson out of that. And I think as a whole, um, you know, raising too much money can be a, can be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, really investors give you money for one reason. It's so you can spend it to, to create more revenue now and profit. When, when investors are driving you to use that money, and forcing you to continue to push and push and push, it can actually cr be a detriment to the business. It doesn't allow you to, to look at your product and really do a full blown analysis on, on what you want to bring forward. What does the product actually mean at its core? Um, you know, our part there, I think was, is that we had a business that the gamers were really good at and the gamblers had all the money. And so the gamers would win, the gamblers, you know, would be the ones putting in the money. So eventually, neither of them ended up using the product. Oh, so we kind of went up the middle. Mm -hmm. So really, if I think if we had spent time putting that together, even as a smaller team before we brought everybody on, it probably would have given us a better, uh, you know, better footing to grow upon. I mean, that's interesting in terms of the use of capital injection into the company. So when, when it came to the time to raise some capital, was there a plan in place or did the plan come after or was it driven by the, by the investors? Well, there was definitely a, a, a strategy and a plan for what type of business it was. Uh, the chairman of the board came from the gambling space. Uh, he was the founder of Crypto Logic. So there was a, a, a really big network of people who already understood that space in, in general. So they raised quickly, raised it on what was a solid idea. I think just because of the acceleration, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it forced some decisions that maybe weren't the best. Of course. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. So, I mean, you started High Fire, and it was really interesting that you got the feedback from your employees or people you worked with recently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that's what the, good friends are for to tell you the truth. Right? Well, yeah, exactly. So, but that insight did you already put into place some things that you may or may not have improved on a, since having you know being within Groove Media and when you're growing your team here at High Fire. Yeah, absolutely. The funny thing was, is it was something I had been working on over the past couple of years because it was something also my wife identified for me. And, uh, you know, so you need wives and friends to tell you, uh, tell you where you're going wrong sometimes. Um, so it was, it was a big challenge in growing a team again. In in if my position was going to change and I was going to be able to get out of the day to day and begin to work on strategy, I had to let that part of the work go. Mm -hmm. So really that's the venture from a one man show up to, to 12 people. And beyond that is, is your position as the leader just completely changes and you have to be willing and able to, to make that transition. If you can't, you're going to be stuck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're, you're never going to be able to grow a business. If you're stuck worrying about everything that's happening on the day to day, as I said, I've worked really hard to, to hire the right people. And hire people that I admire and and I think do amazing work. So why would I worry about it? 
I would hire them to do work for me any day. So, so really that, that was sort of where that feedback, I had already started to make that adjustment. So to hear it was, was great. I really appreciated it. And I, and I recognize it now, maybe when I look back, I, I probably was like, Oh, I didn't think it was that bad, but maybe it was. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely appreciate feedback. And I, and I think that's extremely important for a leader is you have to be able to hear that. You have to be able to take it in, take it for what it's worth, decide how, how you're going to interpret that and, and what you're going to do with it to move forward. Matthew, I want to just take you back to maybe the point where you decided to start High Fire. Um, I know before joining Groove Media, you mentioned that you started an agency and maybe I don't think it was your first agency or your first business as well. So I really wanted to know what were your biggest fears like starting all over again? Yeah. So honestly, um, I'd had two, I had an agency before Groove. I had a brief one right after Groove before I did High Fire. And in both those cases, I had uh, it was a partnership mm -hmm. and, um, you know, partnerships can be great and difficult all at the same time. So really this, this was the first time I'd gone out on my own without a partner. So honestly, I, I, I was really excited. It, it felt great to go back out on my own, start from scratch, um, do the work myself. I, I'm lucky enough to have a skill set that makes it really easy to pick up work and, and, and get something started. So, Financially, I wasn't really, you know, too worried about it. Uh, it gave me a, a sense of freedom again. Uh, and of course, I was commuting downtown Toronto and that, you know, can suck the life out of you for, for, you know, all it's worth. Of course. Um, so really being able to, to begin again, uh, at that time in Oakville and then moving to Hamilton, it, it gave me a, a real sense of freedom. Uh, and I don't think I went in with a, a real strategy on where I thought High Fire was going to go. I just kind of wanted to organically begin to bring in some work and see where where things might happen. So I spent the, probably the first year just playing around, mm -hmm. having some fun, releasing some products of our own. Um, so so it, it was it was great. And then really, as as, as things start to ramp up, I start to recognize, OK, well, here's where I think the business is going to be. Here's where I think we'll begin to focus. Here's my roll up plan. How do I begin to hire people? Who are the first hires? Where's the work going to go? Mm -hmm. So it, it really allowed me to, to reform everything in my own vision. So, you know, obviously anytime you go out on your own, there are, there are risks and there's, you're going to have questions and there's going to be sacrifices you have to make. But really at the end of the day, it brought me a ton of joy to get back at it. And, uh, you know, put a fire back in my belly to begin doing the work again. I love it. And it, it's pretty refreshing to to really get out there. And correct me if I'm wrong, being part of that team at Groove Media and growing a team really put perspective in terms of what you want to do with within your organization today. Yeah. I mean, it, the one thing is I, I've been slow and steady in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've owned other agencies where cash flow can be an issue, you know, where you're, you're worried about making payroll. Mm -hmm. So I consciously this time really made sure that we, we maintained a, a great cash flow so I could sleep at night and not have to think about it. And that no one else who worked for me had to worry about that. So, you know, I tried to mitigate as many of the challenges as I, as I could. Now, as we begin to grow again, that's going to, you know, identifying some, some more challenges that we'll begin to, to, you know, um, succeed at. And, you know, I feel really great about the pace that we're going now doubling in the next year is, is where we begin to stretch, but we've got such great systems in place. Mm -hmm. We spent all last year building out the systems, you know, making sure everything's tracking properly, knowing our KPIs at the end of the day, our, our business is fairly simple. We offer a great service to a client that's valuable to them. And I sell them time. So, so really we've tried to break that business down into very s simple mechanics so we can see exactly what's going on. We'll know if there's any warning signs, uh, you know, from the growth strategy we have. Mm -hmm. So it's very measured. 
is a great way to put it. I, I just want to change focus a bit, Matthew. It was something that you and I shared uh, previous to our interview today was, was, was the vulnerability. I mean, as a business leader, sometimes it's tough, you know, to show weakness. And now this is something that, you know, like I said, we're both passionate about. So yeah. on how being transparent or you're talking openly with, with your mentors, peers, teams, and growth as leaders. So I, I'd love to share or expand on this and maybe share some things or some small steps that someone could take to start opening up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this was a real, this was a real tough one for me, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's something I've, I've really tried to focus on, on my, in my personal and leadership development. Um, it, it, it is probably the single most important change I, I, I've tried to make or continue to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes being a leader of a team or, you know, even at home for your children, you, you want to, you need to almost live up to being on a pedestal. You don't, you know, you don't want to show any cracks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have to build this persona, even with, you know, with your team, with your clients, with your family. Uh, of of strength and like you have the always have the answer right and i think I, I i for a long time put a lot of pressure on myself to to ensure i had the answer or to at least seem like i had the answer and, and that can be a, a slightly bit isolating and, and sometimes a little it's a bit of a facade because because often we don't have the answers and we can expect to have the answers. Not everyone under, has every answer you could ever want. Mm-hmm. So, you know, especially for me as a father uh, of growing teen kids as well, it was really important for me to show them that it's that it it's okay. It's okay to not have the answer. Um, the beauty of not having the answer sometimes is that that people can give you their answer and you're going to learn something. Mm-hmm. And as I said, even like you think it back to uh, my friend Ben, who told me about my my staff at Groove not liking working for me. <laughs> that in the past would have been extremely hard for me to hear, and I would have been very sensitive about it. But now I, I kind of, as I said, I take it as a a, a blessing. I'm glad I heard it. I, I it's given me an opportunity to grow as a, as a leader in person. Everyone makes mistakes. No one's perfect. You know, as we say in many of the things, failure is a teacher. So I want my staff at work to to recognize that you need to ask questions. You need to absorb what the people around you have to share with you. Um, It's when someone shares an opinion, it's not an indictment of who you are or how you are. It's it's more just a critique on what you did mm-hmm, is really mm-hmm. part That's of the recognition there, right? So so it's not to take it personally, it's to take it as as a learning lesson. Make sure that uh that you 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 filter out the good and the bad and you decide how you want to change yourself. No, for sure. Um, but but tr- trying not to take things personal is also difficult as well <laughs> as being a leader. Uh, it is, it, but I'm getting less, you know, I think as I, as I continue to do this, I'm getting l- less sensitive to that. I, I kind of actually enjoy it in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, will I always enjoy it? Maybe there'll be times where I'm a little sensitive about it, but, uh, but I'm a realist. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly believe I'm a realist. I think I know, I, I'm beginning to know myself very well and allowing myself to to, you know, be vulnerable when people want need it and when I need it. So really, you know, I would say, you know, most people you're going to deal with are kind hearted and are, are telling you things that they think are going to help you. And and I don't think I don't think that's always true, but I think for the most part that's happening. Um you're also by allowing them to share with you, really allowing them you to connect with that person and allow them to give something to you. And I think we all need to allow ourselves to receive a little bit more. You know what I mean? I think that's it's part of the whole vulnerability part is just receiving and receiving with grace. So I would say for anyone looking to sort of expand on their vulnerability, some of the things I've tried to do personally, and I don't think these are the, all the answers, mm-hmm. but... Um, I'm just trying to hold awareness to, to everything that comes to me and everything I give out. I'm trying to express joy as often as possible. 
I'm asking a ton of questions. I've actually really kind of forced myself to even get outside and myself and, and go out and meet people, new people and ask them questions and tell them very transparently where I'm at, where our business is at, you know, where our challenges are, where our successes are. Um, you know, I like also to be a great example for others. I want, I want them to see that that's okay. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we're all human beings. Let's just enjoy each other and, and, and have fun. And, and I think when you're, when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, you allow a lot more joy into your life. So I want to, to ask you, Matthew, like who are your business mentors or the mentors that you work with? And if you could share what they taught you. Yeah. So, so I have a pretty active set of, uh, you know, some great leaders that I've worked with over my career, either as clients, partners, um, you know, friends, mm -hmm. as I said, the guys, the guys from Groove have continued to be great, uh, great mentors and friends. And in many cases, partners with me, Michael, who, who was one of the partners at Groove actually ran Metrum, the medical marijuana business. So I got to work with him again, you know, closely, which is always great. Um, I've been blessed with the first job I ever had was a, a woman named Patty Sterling, who uh, I came out of art school, of all things. <laughs> and uh, she she had a business making websites for training for the government. And I'd never programmed before. And she, and she brought me on, paid me a great wage to sit and learn how to program. That's she was nice. kind of a, you know, which taught me that I like to bring people on and give them a chance to to learn and to build their skill sets. I, I think you come out of school with a, with a good set of skills, but when you get into the workforce is your real opportunity to gather and build and, and, and figure out who you are in that, mm -hmm. in that environment. And I think she really allowed me to do that. And unfortunately I, I don't see her often, but I really hold, you know, I hold that memory. And I think that's part of mentorship is just holding on to those little nuggets that you get from different people at different times it doesn't always have to be an ongoing relationship. It's it's just, you know, taking in what you can when you can and and, and focusing on that and remembering that. So I have other uh, a client of mine, Rob McCann, who also gave me one of my first jobs, uh, runs a business called Clear Cable here in Hamilton. Uh, he's been a client of mine for 10 years. And um, we we have continued to build some partnerships in and around that. And I admire the way he's managed to grow a team and, and to, to find again, that focus and, and, and go right after it and achieve it. I think that's, that's at completely admirable. Um, let's see. Yeah. And the other one is obviously family. My wife has, has been a huge mentor for me while I've been really out, you know, at the grindstone doing these startups and, and, and working in these businesses. She's, she's raised my, my children. She's, you know, help me with personal growth, which I think is entirely important. Sometimes when you're in the, in the mix of business and, and you're busy, busy, busy all the time, you forget that you have to also continue to work on yourself. And she's been a, a fantastic reminder of that. And I'm thankful every day that she continues to help me with that. Um, you know, but at the end of the, really mentors are everywhere around us, mm -hmm, you true. know, we just have to to ask again, be vulnerable, ask questions, open up to them, look for those nuggets of, of wisdom. Um, you know, listening to podcasts like yours, I, I they're not really my mentors, but honestly, I, I feel like I, there's something I can take from everyone and, and I can to apply to where I am today. And so so mentorship is not only knowledge gathering, but it's also building friendships and relationships with people that, you know, that are, that are important will help you grow. hundred percent. And I know a lot of business leaders, uh, read a lot as well. And I, I do believe, uh, Matthew, you're an, you're, you're quite an avid reader as well. So can you share with us what you're currently reading and, and while you do that, perhaps give us the key takeaways from, from the book. Yeah. So it's funny. I, I'm an avid reader, but I'll, I'll tell you, the truth is, is that podcasts have completely been getting in the way of my reading. I, I have about four half read books <laughs> that I can't seem <laughs> to get through. So I, I, because I'm in my car a lot, I listen to a lot of podcasts. So, so hopefully you don't mind me segueing to that instead of books. Cause no, no problem. I think I can give you sort of my thoughts around that. And I like podcasts. Yeah. I bet you do. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, what the difference I'm finding between podcasts and books are is that with podcasts, because of 
the ease of consumption and uh, the fact that I don't need to dedicate a huge amount of time to one subject, I can gather a lot more information. Mm -hmm. uh, I find all, often with a book, you're getting a singular voice so that you're committed to hearing that person's voice on that subject. And I think that's fantastic. Podcasting allows you to take the same subject, hear it from so many different perspectives, and, and then sort of run your own filter over it to decide what you really want to take out of it. So, so I've been really heavily listening to those because I can sit in the car, I can jump around, try some different things and, uh, you know, hear a, a wide range of, in this case, even leadership experiences. Some of the best pod business podcasts, you know, are, are out there and, and there's tons and tons of content. So it really allows me to sort of customize and choose my experience on what I want to want to get out of that. I love it. And, and I didn't pay Matthew to talk, talk about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, like it, it's it's been a unbelievable renaissance for the for the medium and I, and I and I'm totally engrossed in it and it it's a part of my daily life. And that, you know, the podcasts I'm consuming are are both business and and you know, some fiction and some mm -hmm. some really interesting takes on it but from a business perspective i i've really spent the last time focusing on uh people building businesses cuz it's what i'm doing right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. so i like to hear the origin stories i like to hear where someone started where the where the hiccups were and and how they managed to get around it and and, and in some cases succeed in some cases not and, and I think that's the honesty that comes across in most of that stuff when you're doing an interview rather than than just reading someone's written memoir. Sure. So that's probably my biggest takeaway from that stuff is is just listen for the again, like a mentor, listen for the little nuggets you can pull out of it, and and um, and and just absorb as much as you can and decide how you want that to affect your life. So fun question, Matthew, and I know we talked about this a bit in terms of getting feedback from employees, or at least past past employees or past friends. But if I were to, I guess, ask your current team or even your peers now uh, what the best leadership quality you possess, uh, what do you think they would say? Or what do you know they would say? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's the question. Uh, you know what? We have a bunch of characters in my office, so I'd kind of worry about what they would say about me. But um, I think... Uh, I can tell you what I hope they would say. Sure. And uh, what I'm aiming for is I'm, I've been in business long enough and I've, I've worked in places that are, are stringent and, and regimented and, and maybe not so much fun to of a place to work. So I really am striving to hope that they see me as someone who's very genuine, who's kind hearted, who looks to bring joy to the office space. And that they enjoy being there. There's nothing worse than people coming to work where they don't want to be. So, and I'm included in that. I, I didn't start a company to want to go somewhere that wasn't fun every day. So, I hope they see me as a fun and genuine person. No. I'll have to ask when I go to the office and and do it to, you know, let them fill in little slips and hand them in what, anonymously. Well, it goes back to your vulnerability point and asking questions. Uh, I mean, that might be a difficult question to ask, but I mean, if you're already open to hearing that, I think it's a great exercise as well. Yeah, no, I think it, I think it's a great question. It should be asked and it should be, it should be something that uh, you do on a regular basis. Like we all have room to grow. So, so, you know, who better to tell you than the people who spend eight hours a day with you? So what else, Matthew? Do you have any special projects, uh, maybe some initiatives or, or anything fun that, that you're looking towards, uh, or even excited about? Yes. Yeah, so, so we just launched, we like to do these little experimental projects, uh, internally. So we just launched one called Patchwork. It's an app for Android, Android and iOS. Mm -hmm. Um, it allows people to create really simple drawings and share them with the community. We tried to to really go with a, the simplest model we could and, and provide people with a way to express their creativity mm -hmm. and and have it as a safe place for people who who maybe you know don't feel they're the most creative people in the world to to come on and, and have fun and 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 you know experiment. And so we we've had a really great time beginning to build the audience around that. 
you know, look at, at how they're using it. So um, we, we just launched it at the Hamilton Film Festival where we asked people to draw pictures after they watched the film and, and express how, how it made them feel. And we got some great feedback from that. And we're hoping to launch it in, in the Hamilton Art Gallery soon, which would be awesome to have people from around the world submitting artwork uh, to, a, to a live environment in a gallery. That's, that's so, really so that, cool. Yeah, it's great for our team. It gives them a chance to sort of do something outside of what we're doing every day. Uh, gives them a chance to experiment with some technology that maybe they wouldn't have, you know, had a chance to on some of our client work. And really, once they have that skill set, it's something we like to bring to our clients and say, here's some, here's some things we might be able to do with this. So it's been a great experience. Uh, other than that, something else I'm looking forward to is just, as I said earlier, some snow. I'm ready to get out on the hill and get outside and, and enjoy winter. Well, I, what some it. people may not, <laughs> may not agree with. Well, it depends where they're, where they're listening to you from, but for sure. I mean, myself as well. I, I like to snowboard as well. So looking forward to get, getting on the slopes as well. Oh, we'll have to get out sometime. So having a blast, Matthew. But before we end, I'd love to get really some final thoughts, observations, and ideally some type of actionable recommendations that you could share to anyone who's looking to grow with the, as a business leader, or they're starting from scratch an agency, or or maybe they're 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 going through that challenge of growing a team from like thirty to a hundred. Love to love to get some tips. Yeah. So I think. The most important one for me is is that uh, growing as a person is also growing as a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, they they go completely hand in hand, and and who you bring to the job as a person is who you're who how you're going to be interpreted as a leader. I think as well. Um, yeah, continue to allow yourself to be vulnerable. Listen, you know, allow people to tell you what they think, and take it with, you know, take it with some real. Um, sense of appreciation. Um, other ones I like to do is embrace joy. You know, life's too short to worry about everything. I really, you know, work hard with my staff to recognize that you're not going to be perfect all the time. Um, things are going to happen. When something happens, fix it and, and come with a solution and don't worry about it because, because we do great work. We're going to continue to do great, great work you know, our clients appreciate us. That's um, you know, leadership is listening is one I, that kind of sticks in my head all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you hire a team for a reason. They, they are going to bring you information. They're going to bring you new ideas. Uh, your job is to, to help them get there. You know, there was a, a podcast I was listening to a little while ago. It was a, an ebook and uh, this is an old one, so it's going to refer to, to men, but um, that, you know, you're, you're in the business of building men, not product as a leader. So that applies to women as well, obviously, um, that we're here to build the people. The people are what makes your company great. Not you as a leader specifically, it's the people. So make sure you embrace and help build those people up. Um, and then work with your team and share your experiences. You know, tell them about what you've been through. Make sure they they see them they see the opportunity themselves to to sort of to to grow in internally in your company and and maybe experience some of the things you experienced when you were an employee somewhere. Um, we all started from somewhere, and we got to get every, give give everyone the chance to get off the starting line, right? Even if you trip up a bit, you need to to really allow them to go. So I think that that's probably it, and just try your try your hardest. To close, Matthew, just please tell us where we could find more information about you, Hi Fire, I mean, Patchwork or any other apps or projects that you're doing, uh, anything you'd love to share with us. Yeah, I'd say you can find Hi Fire on any of the standard social media channels. I myself am uh, kind of old school and, and have, have suffered from not having enough time to, to really use social media a ton. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get a hold of me, you can just email me at Matthew at HighFire.com. Um, you can reach out by phone as well. Um, but you know what? Highfire.com, there's lots of information and great case studies we have there. You can find out how to, how to find patchwork, uh, or just search it in your, uh, you know, in the app store. Um, come check out what we're doing and have some fun with it and let us, you know, send us your feedback. Tell us what you think. We're ready to hear it. Awesome. Matthew, thank you again for spending some time on the Business Leadership Podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's great. 
That's it, folks. Thank you for joining me for episode number 41 of the Business Leadership Podcast with guest Matthew Hollingshed. It was such an insightful conversation from a business leader, a father, and, wait for it, a snowboarder. I really loved his insight about personal development, especially where he says, growing as a person is growing as a leader. I love that. If you want to learn more about Matthew, High Fire, the Patchwork app, or anything else we discussed, please visit the episode homepage that could be found at thebusinessleadership.com slash 041. By the way, thank you for all those who reached out to me via Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and even via email. I appreciate you. If you have any questions or ways I can improve the show, please feel free to reach out to me on said social media platforms or via email directly at edwin at thebusinessleadership.com. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to the podcast. Thank you again. And until next time, Edwin signing off. Thank you for listening to the Business Leadership Podcast at thebusinessleadership.com.